Hello, welcome to the Mark Janot Show, the cybersecurity show. In this video, I'm going to talk about how hackers hack lottery machines. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. This video is only for educational purposes. Do not do anything illegal or unethical. So uh, exploiting software vulnerabilities, right? Some hackers have tried to take advantage of flaws in lottery software or random number generation. So lottery machines and systems are designed with multiple layers of security to prevent exploitation. However, some vulnerabilities have been discovered and exploited in the past. So here are some of the ways hackers you know have attempted to exploit lottery systems so again software is one of those things to where it constantly needs updating and upgrading right so obviously software vulnerabilities there's code manipulation in some cases insiders with access to the lottery software have manipulated the code to predict or control winning numbers this typically requires deep knowledge of the system and privileged access um we talked about random number generation right uh, the flaws are hackers have reversed engineered RNG algorithms to predict future numbers. This was famously done with some slot machines where the RNG chips formula was cracked. You have hardware exploits, right? Terminal manipulation. Some hackers have found ways to manipulate lottery terminals. In one case, a group exploited a bug that caused display freezes, allowing them to see winning tickets before printing. There's also printer vulnerabilities. Some lottery machines have had vulnerabilities in their printers, potentially allowing the printing of fraudulent tickets. There's network attacks and, uh, you know, more specifically intercepting communications. That's where hackers have attempted to intercept data transmissions between lottery terminals and central servers to gather information or manipulate transactions. We have timestamp exploitation. That's where some systems that have been, uh, you know, they had vulnerabilities related to timestamp handling, potentially allowing back dating of ticket purchases. Uh, and then physical tampering, right? Good old, good old physical tampering. Uh, that's old school, uh, you know, where there's attempts to physically manipulate lottery machines uh, by installing hidden, you know, hidden cameras to view internal component, modifying hardware to influence number selection, tampering with ticket printers or, uh, you know, validation systems. Then you have social engineering uh, rather than technical hacks. Some have tried to, you know, socially engineer, you know, have social engineer tactics for lottery machines. What is that? That's insider threats. One of the most likely vectors would be targeting lottery employees or contractors with access to the machines. Hackers could, you know, use pretexting or phishing to trick insiders into revealing login credentials or security procedures, installing malware on lottery systems, physically tampering with machines impersonation. So there's a whole bunch of ways that, you know, you know, social engineering and hackers can, can, you know, can be combined. Uh, there's impersonation, uh, where attackers might pose as lottery officials to gain physical access to machines, IT support staff to manipulate lottery employees, maintenance workers to tamper with equipment. Uh, you know, then you have exploiting of human vulnerabilities, right? That's, you know, building trust or rapport with lottery staff over time. And then there's fear using urgent threats to pressure employees into compliance. There's obligation. And this falls into the umbrella of social engineering, uh, which is, you know, an obligation is exploiting people's desire to be helpful. Now, why social engineering could work uh, and why it's many times effective is because it exploits human psychology rather than technical vulnerabilities. Some reasons it could, you know, succeed against lottery systems is because employees may not be adequately trained on security protocols. The high value nature of lottery machines makes them an attractive target. You have complex systems provide many potential points of human error. So to protect against such attacks, lottery organizations would need robust security awareness training, strict access controls, and verification procedures for any system changes or maintenance. Now, it's not all what it's cracked up to be, right? Uh, it is still very difficult. It takes a really trained, uh, you know, hacker to do it. So. Uh, the reason why lottery hacking is difficult is because modern lotteries have extensive security measures that make it, you know, that make successful hacking extremely challenges. What are they? Physical and digital security controls and machines and systems. You have multiple layers of auditing and verification. You have live drawings that cannot be manipulated after the fact. 
there's separation between ticket sales and number selection. It, you know, even if vulnerabilities were found, exploiting them at scale without detection would be borderline impossible, right? Lottery organizations constantly update security to stay ahead of potential threats. Now let's get into legal, uh, you know, some have found legal ways to improve odds like the MIT group that exploited the cash windfall game. However, such loopholes are rare and quickly closed once discovered. The most reliable approach remains playing responsibly within the rules. Now, there, you know, what are the legal consequences? Uh, <clears throat> the legal consequences if you hack a lottery machine. So, the legal consequences of hacking lottery machines are severe and can result in significant criminal penalties. Right, and some of the key points that you're going to want, you know, people who want to hack lottery machines are so they, what they want to consider is federal charges, hacking lottery machines or, or attempting to fraudulently manipulate lottery systems likely violate several federal laws, computer fraud and the abuse act, right? There's an act out there, which basically says unauthorized access or damage to protected computer system used by lotteries could result in felony charges. There's wire fraud, uh, which is using electronic communications to execute a scheme to defraud lotteries of prize money is a federal crime you have racketeering and that's organized efforts to rig lottery games may be prosecuted prosecuted right under rico laws there's penalties for federal lottery related crimes that can include up to 20 years in prison for each count substantial fines asset forfeiture restitution to victims now there are state charges as well <laughs> you know it, it gets deep it's not only federal they're state most states also have specific laws prohibiting lottery fraud and tampering with lottery equipment potential state charges could include computer crimes theft by deception conspiracy money laundering and then there was a notable case i believe it's eddie tipton the most you know the, the most infamous lottery hacking case involved eddie tipton right former security director for the multi-state lottery association now this is what you know when they talk about insider threats this is this is kind of like what they're talking about so tipton installed malware on random number generators to rig drawings he and accomplices claimed at least 24 million in rigged prizes across multiple states tipton was ultimately sentenced up to 25 years in prison he was also ordered to pay 2.2 million in restitution so the key takeaways uh were um e you know even attempting to hack or manipulate lottery systems is likely illegal penalties can be extremely severe including lengthy prison sentences lottery organizations take fraud very seriously and will aggressively prosecute cases so the legal ways to improve your odds like uh selby strategy are very very rare exceptions that's no that's no shocker right a slot machine jammer is an illegal device that some people attempted to use to cheat or interfere with slot machines so here are some of the key points about slot machine jammers again i'm not encouraging the use of this this is strictly for educational purposes so there are makeshift electronic devices that supposedly interfere with a slot machine circuits the goal is to try to disrupt the normal functions of the slot machine and trick it into producing winning combinations or payouts modern slot machines are protected against such interference so jammers are ineffective on newer machines so they say so they say so they say because hacking tools evolve just like software evolves so at best a jammer might shut down or damage a slot machine but it will not guarantee triggering payouts so they say using a slot machine jammer is illegal and considered cheating there are no legitimate jammer apps that work these are scams attempting to use a jammer risks damaging the machine your own device and getting into serious legal trouble so casinos have extensive security and surveillance to detect any tampering attempts older mechanical slot machines uh you know decades ago may have been vulnerable but modern electric electronic machines with random number generators are not affected so they say so uh, the bottom line is that the slot machine jammers do not work as claimed um are illegal to use and will likely result in arrest if attempted in a casino 
Reputable sources advise against trying to cheat slot machines and instead recommend enjoying the games as intended. So that's what I have for you today. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. If you like this video, if you appreciate it, if you want more content like this, if you gain something, if you are more educated on the topic, please hit that subscribe button and the like button. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe and see you on the next video.